My guest at this time can be seen every week on Vice TV as part of MLW. It is Ross and Marshall. It is the Von Eriks. Uh, guys, thank you so much for taking some more time to chat with me here today. Uh, uh, thanks for having us, my friend. Awesome to be on your show. Yeah, we appreciate it. We're, we're glad to be here again. We hey, love yeah. wrestling. Hey, I, you know, we love you guys, too. And uh, I'm going to start right off by asking, like, how long have you had an inkling that MLW might be headed to Vice TV? Because of everybody, I feel like you guys might have had a little bit of a heads up before everybody else. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit, you know, um, after because a lot of people didn't know that MLW was talking to us before we uh, we our, our family did the dark side of the ring. And uh, and it's kind of it, it when it when it aired, we were we were our debut was like a few months before that or a month before that yeah. or after that. I forget exactly which one was first, but it was it was just it was a it's kind of perfect, perfect timing. But we always felt like it would be a really uh, it'd be good for MLW. And it's uh, it's kind of fits the vice vibe you know a yeah, little bit. it was kind of in the back of our mind we thought you know maybe it would be cool if they could do something like work something out kind of thing you know and they kept playing the dark side of the ring and it was picking up momentum for vice and so it was just it just everything fell into place and if anybody could have uh, made it happen it's definitely a uh, court bauer <laughs> so so were you guys at all like at any point just kind of like a middle person or like uh, were you were you saying nice things about trying to make this happen i feel like you guys seem to you know, I spoke with uh, Jason and Evan just the other day, and he noted that, you know, he he immediately saw that the cross connection here with you guys and everything and that he saw that the two entities could share the same platform seemingly harmo harmoniously, you know? Yes. Yeah. It, you know, uh, Core Bauer, he's always trying to get the company to, company to grow and he's always just, you know, like the zone and he's uh, putting himself out there just to help MLW grow. And yeah, and he, he did. He came to us, uh, and you know, trying to get in connection with Vice, just to see how see how it would uh, see how it would come about. And literally, that's all we did was just put him in connection because you know we're friends with Evan and Jason, and then boom, Court made it happen. <laughs> so yeah, you know, we thought it would be cool, but it was actually Court that said, "Hey, you know, can you know maybe get us on a phone call and you know see what we can do." And so I mean, we we you know we don't want to give ourselves too much credit or anything, but you know. We, we just we we just put uh, yeah I guess put those people in we just put them together, together and backed away yeah, and backed away. <laughs> so so taking a step back here, so like what's what looking back on the dark side of the ring experience, like how was it for you working with Jason and Evan? Like you know what 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 was it like being on set, and just kind of being around them while they while you guys were making the last of the Von Erichs episode? You know what I think really helped was uh, Jason and Evan are are genuine wrestling fans, and they're not you know uh, they're 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 not just. Uh, you know, filmmakers, you know, it, it was really cool. They, they got my dad to really get in depth with, uh, with his story and get, get emotional, which does not happen. My dad is like, you know, the jokester, he jokes about everything. He's really lighthearted. And, and, uh, he's, he's just, he's that we, 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 uh, we take a lot from that, you know, cause a man that's gone through so much can be that lighthearted and joyful and stuff. But to see him go back to that, you saw him mentally go back to that. And Jason and, uh, Evan, you know, they really yeah, brought it they out. They just, yeah, they just had a way of getting those those answers out of them and asking those really those great digging questions and stuff. But and we so. we were kind of there as translators. We had to because uh, my dad my dad has really bad hearing, so we had to we were there for all the filming and you know had to fix dad's hair, fix uh, keep dad keep dad you know uh, on the topic because when he tells a when he tells a great story, he tells it different every time or I'll leave out a detail or something like that. And so it's, you got you're just like reminding him and stuff, but he's a great storyteller, especially when he's not ready. How's, how's your dad feel about you guys being on national television on a, a major network each week now? Oh man, he, uh, he's, he's, he's pumped. He, he's, he, he's, he's kind of got this, like, I told you so, uh, I, <laughs> I knew it was just a matter of time, you know, this kind of thing. And so he's been saying this since we we're like five and six and stuff. He's like, you, you guys, uh, you guys are gonna, you guys are gonna be Kings one day. You guys, uh, he he did his belief in my mom too. I know it sounds uh, a little cheesy or whatever. My mom always said I'd be our, great. Our but, mom and dad totally believe in us the but, whole way. You know, but so. but you know it's it's it is crazy to see. You know we we believed MLW was the best fit for us uh, uh, out of anything that was out there. You know and that was you know two or three years ago, and now to see it finally like really shooting up is like oh man, this is really happening. Yeah. Got to feel kind of good that I feel like you made a bet that that seemingly has paid off here. I mean, not only are you guys on national TV, I'm sure you've built some like good clout and goodwill in the locker room as well for being, you know, pillars and helping the company build and 
grow as much as it has, you know? Yeah. Well, yes. I mean, we don't want to play that role, you know, I, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure it doesn't hurt. We, we, we haven't really been in the locker room though, since, yeah, yeah. since because of COVID and stuff. That's so true. True. I, I hopefully, hopefully I get some respect now when I get in there, less wedgies and dumpster dives and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, and I think there's probably going to be some kendo sticks lying around backstage. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. So well, the reason I ask you guys to kind of look back on the dark side experience is like, would you like to see some crossover? Do you see a space where Evan and Jason could maybe work with MLW or the dark side? Do you see any room for the two uh, entities to work together? I, I, I do. I think that would be really, really cool because they do have great minds for the business. They're great storytellers. And isn't that what wrestling is, is storytelling, you know, and. Uh, I definitely see something like that probably happening. I, it's crazy, you know, just waking up and seeing Vice and MLW, they're, they're together now. And yeah. so now it's like as crazy as it sounds. Anything's possible. Yeah, it really is. Anything's possible. I'm, I'm excited to see what comes from this. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, and obviously now you guys are on Vice. Uh, the first programming rolled out over the weekend. Uh, I got to wake up and watch the Von Erics on Saturday afternoon which was something I didn't know that I'd ever get to do again in my lifetime, which was really oh. nice. Um, <laughs> Thank and uh, yeah, no problem, dude. And so, like, the main event, like, it's you and you and MJF Marshall there on on the first episode. How was that? Knowing that you guys were being presented so prominently right out of the gate on this first episode, really a first it, introduction for a lot of fans. It it, it just shows uh, Court Bauer's character and the kind of man he is. If if you do anything that um, helps him, he'll he'll help you. We we didn't really feel like putting that, or we like did anything. We, you know, we knew Evan, we knew Jason. And, uh, you know, we, we'd do anything for court. He's a, he's a great guy. And so putting them in connection was just, you know, we, we felt like it was just the right thing to do, but for him to, you know, air, air that match, like right off, right out of the gates was, you know, it was humbling, really humbling. And, you know, and it was a, it was a fun match in Dallas and stuff. And so it was, uh, I blushed. I'm not gonna lie. I blushed pretty hard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's pretty cool guys. I mean, just being on there in general and like, you know, you guys, uh, you guys right now are just showing archive content, but like it does sound like down the road here after we start filming at uh, the ECW Renning stuff, you guys are going to get in to be putting some some first run content out there as well. Uh, how yeah. do you feel, how do you feel? Because you guys are doing work right now. You've been doing these no fan shows. How do you feel about the decision to not show that content and rather some archive content until the, the new stuff kind of comes along? I, I think it's cool. Personally, I don't know how you feel as um, when the crowd is there. I mean, it's great wrestling w w without a crowd. because It kind of goes back to like the the art form of wrestling, but it's, uh, I, I really love the crowd being there. It's, uh, it's, you know, not, it's having that adrenaline and reading the people and, and kind of, uh, it's cause I don't know what I'm going to do till I get out there. And a lot of it is listening to the crowd and following and following the crowd. And it kind of like fuels me. And so not having the crowd chops hurt, everything hurts. And, uh, and, and it's, uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's not horrible, but I miss the fans. I love the fans. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you you kind of double main evented Marshall because you were on the main event on on the MLW premiere, and then you also got to main event on the the MLW fusion with Tom Lawler. Ross, how do you how do you feel about this right now with Marshall yeah. being the <laughs> singles main eventer at the moment? No, man, I I'm if if he's if he's winning, I'm winning. I feel like you know I I want him to do good. He's a Von Eric too, you know. That, as long as he's out there killing it, you know, it's, he, it's good for both of us. I, I may be a, a main evented with Tom Lawler, but Ross won his match. So he, uh, he did the name proud. So he, he, he did a great job. Yeah. You guys have like, uh, by the way, the variation of claw moves continues to grow. What, what have you come up with? A, I saw you were looking for a name for this claw slam. Have you settled I'm, on it yet? I'm, I, I'm, I'm just looking for a pair of, uh, two of the fans to agree on a name because there's, there's just so many different ones, but there, there's, there's uh, great names. He named it in 2000, uh, 2012 or 13. I did the move on the, on a Japanese young boy in pro wrestling Noah. And uh, he said, call it the pendulum claw slam. And uh, I, I like the name. That's what it was called for, you know, six or five or six years. And then, but you haven't had a chance to do it yet in MLW it, until yeah. recently. So I debuted it in MLW and trying to come with a, uh, with a new name. Cause I, I believe Hammerstone's got a, a pendulum slam, some kind of pendulum slam. It's a nightmare but, pendulum. Night, night, yeah, exactly. And where you both have the blonde beards. I don't want to be a, I, I don't want to be a knockoff version, you know, copying him coming in later with the, with the, with the name. <laughs> I hadn't really thought about you as a knockoff version of Hammerstone, but now that you oh, kind of cool. put it out, you know, I maybe I was kidding. I was kidding. I was kidding. <laughs> Edit that out. Edit that out. So you guys, you guys got a little backup here uh, from ACH up against Team Filthy. 
Uh, what do you guys, what is it like working with ACH? How, how has it been having him a part of MLW so far? Just a great guy, man. Yeah. Fun to work with, you know, upbeat, just happy dude. I mean, fellow Texan, you know, he, he's like, uh, uh, right when you meet him, he really is like uh, a, a friend you'd have from like high school. You know, he's just like real genuine and it's great to be around. Maybe it's the the Texan connection, but we're, we're really happy to uh, to team with him. You know, he's he's yeah, he's a he's a great guy, great athlete, a freak of nature, has tree trunk yeah, legs. I was a fan of him before he even came to MLW. I was just I remember just going through social media, seeing highlights and stuff of him. Just like man, that guy's good. Let's go back to his leg. How yeah. huge are his legs? <laughs> He's got, he's got nice legs. Okay, his legs are huge. It's crazy. Take it away. Like yeah. twice in my head, two of my heads. Okay, okay. and I'll stop. They're big legs. Uh, you know, you say what you say what you feel. Um, so you guys have been like going at it with Team Filthy here for a long time now, years now at this point. Like, how how does it feel to be this deep uh, into this rivalry between between you all and Team Filthy? Uh, it, does it feel like? You're, you're ready to do something new? Do you feel like it's hotter than ever? Like, how do you feel about where you're at with Team Filthy right now? You know, because it, COVID has complicated things a little bit. You know, maybe it's drawn it out a little uh, longer. Yeah, a little longer. But um, in Philadelphia, July 10th, it's the it's the last dance. We're going to end everything. And, you know, it, it's going to uh, – I'll have my brother with me, and we'll, we'll be together. And we, we feel like we're together. We're unstoppable. And, um, you know – Tom in our singles match, he used a weapon on my knee, but I didn't want to make excuses. I just saw it watching. I actually didn't know he used a weapon, but we're we're uh, we're, we're gonna we're we're gonna level the playing field. We're gonna make things right. July tenth, we owe it to Texas. We owe it to everybody, everybody that uh, that can't stand filthy Tom. So I, I'm ex I'm excited for July tenth. But yeah, I do. We came to MLW because we wanted to work with you know the best the best wrestling has, and so. You know, we, we want to be able to work with everybody in MLW, you know, the tag teams, the, the you know, we even single runs or whatever. We, we want to get it. We want to get a, a taste of everything. Yeah. And so you brought up, you know, we, we've talked about ECW Arena here, you know, July 10th. Uh, it looks like MLW has like uh, check the website. Three live events here already scheduled. Uh, the last one, the third, you'll be back here in Chicago. So you guys actually getting back out in front of the fans right now. How does that feel to you to know that like the light is no longer at the end of the tunnel? The light is kind of here now things seems seems like they're going to be getting a little bit normal here in the not too distant future oh so awesome and we we knew eventually it's like uh once things get i mean i don't know if it's going to ever go normal normal but i mean this is as normal as you know we've been looking forward to this whole time so we're just so stoked so pumped just to get back out there with you know having you know, just to prove all the all the people that have supported us, just to prove them right. You know, work our butt off for them. And I, I think it's a possibility, though, it could be better than what normal was because I don't know if you got a chance to watch that last UFC, how hot that crowd was, and oh yeah, the fans were so happy to be back. And so I hope that I hope that same that same vibe comes with wrestling because. I missed I missed you guys so bad the fans. So I hope y'all missed us. We we, we I, I think we all took each other for granted a little, <laughs> yeah. a little bit. And now we're just just happy to be back together. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait to get back in there with just real life people. It's gonna be great. <laughs> when you guys look back on this period, though, um, you know, is there anything you did kind of like or learn or take away from this pandemic era that you you wouldn't have if you had not been given this kind of year and a half in this weird bubble? Yeah, no. Well, it definitely helped. I mean, it, it helped. Uh, the, it, like I said before, it kind of went back to like you know, the, the purest. Just it's a it's a competition. You're focused on your opponent, nothing else. You know, there's no other distractions, and you, you know, it just just yeah, just the more competitive environment. I guess yeah, it felt more competitive, and it was good uh, ha having the 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 layoff. You know, it was good to. I just had a baby, or I had a baby a year and a half ago, but I'm about to have another baby now. But it was good to. To, to be home during all that during an important time but we still you know we we were training every day in the at the beach wrestling it's gonna feel good to start wrestling in a wrestling ring and not a beach because a beach has no give at all and so, so I, you, guys I, been down, you guys have just been down on the beach with dad just like falling down and, and practicing is that what you guys have been doing yeah that doesn't come every time but yeah he, it's mostly us we look like two psychos too because we'll, we'll uh We'll I know. Really, yeah, well, if people come up and be like, break it up, break it up. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or if we do like a Hurricane Ron or something, they're like, I've never seen that in a fist fight before. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, so it's it gets crazy. What the hell kind of fist fight is this? Or yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I would imagine that's quite a spectacle. You run across a couple of Von Erich just beating each other up on a beach. That sounds like, 
No, we actually, it was a, a few months ago, but we actually had a, uh, yeah, a cop come up and he was going to break us up. And then, then yeah, he, I, I guess he knew who we were. You know, it, it's a small Island. More and more people are knowing that we're out here doing this. And so it's kind of like supporters. We're kind of like a novelty around here, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, the Von Erics. It's like now. Nah, it used to be Dallas. I guess Hawaii is is the new hotspot for y'all. So that's different. Maybe, maybe we, we Dallas is still really really close and dear to our hearts. All, all of Texas, like San Antonio, we wrestled in San Antonio, and it was like one of the hottest crowds we've ever got to to work in. It was just they were on fire, and um, also Israel, believe it or not, is a crazy crowd. They're 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 awesome. They're they're they, yeah. They're it's just they love the baby face, hate the heel, but. They hate the heel so much. Like uh, we had some uh, like tears in their eyes. Hate the heel. Yeah, like, I love that. That's yeah, like, it's, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Was there talk pre-pandemic of you guys getting court to to fly everybody over to Israel to do an MLW show there or no? We're we're nudging them. We're we're always popping up that question. Uh, I mean, yeah, no. He there were there were talks, serious talks. So you know, we'll we'll see. The dream is to get MLW in Israel. It, that it is a huge city with not very much wrestling. Of course, the IWL. It's a younger promotion. But they have great talent, great production, and all that stuff. But because of COVID, they, they took a pretty big blow. But the dream is to get you know MLW to to, to Israel. That, that'd be a dream of ours at least, because it's a huge city, huge crowd, or hot crowd, but no wrestling. So I feel like we should be the first to take advantage of it. Yeah. Wow. Uh, that's really cool. Yeah. You guys obviously have a, the family history there. Would be huge. I'm sure you guys would draw a very large crowd. So. Um, well, one of the other big buzzy topics uh, surrounding MLW right now is I saw this rumor the other day that there might be like a working relationship at some point with MLW, maybe WWE. I don't know. Have you, have you heard or seen that report that's out there at the moment? I, I saw that. I did see that. And I hadn't got a chance to talk to anybody about it. Yeah, I'm really curious about that and uh, seeing seeing how that even came about. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, it, I think Court's going to look at it and he'll see if it's in our best interest. You know, he may talk to him, but, you know, Court's not going to be named all struck by, you know, the name yeah. or anything. So and we, we definitely he's his uh, MLW is his, you know, first priority and stuff. So we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, we, we want to work with everybody. So if, if uh, Court wants us to beat up on some NXT guys or WWE guys, it doesn't matter. Bring him in. It does seem like he would be pretty badass if, like, you know, a couple of MLW guys just kind of showed up down at NXT. I don't know, like you. That would be, yeah, it'd be cool. It'd be cool. That'd be awesome. Yeah, would, I'm not gonna lie. It'd be sick. But let's just see what Court does. Yeah. <laughs> see what the boss man said. I'd see y'all. I see Fatu. I see Hammerstone. It's like y'all don't all get along, but like I don't know. Maybe it'd be fun to see y'all pop down. Form an alliance. Go over there. Raise hell. Yeah, it'd be awesome. Hy <laughs> hypothetically, if there was something to come of this, are there are there dream tag matches for you guys over there? Are there any tag matches in our promotional you think would be really good? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm 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 sure there there would be there there would definitely be matches that we, that we would enjoy and stuff. But you know our. Our uh, our focus has, has been on 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 MLW because there's 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 tag teams right now in MLW we haven't even worked with yet. You know it's been mostly Team Filthy and um, you know a few other guys, uh, Spirit Squad, and Contra, stuff. A little Con bit, yeah, yeah, Contra a little bit. But yeah, I I I, 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 I want to try to get everyone everyone down in MLW to really establish that you know f to prove to ourselves we're a great tag team, and then anybody else that wants to come these other promotions Japan promotions all that stuff we, we, we want everybody you know we don't want to limit ourselves yeah we're we maybe we're biased but we've always just believed in MLW the, the product that it, that it has the this the team and the production and everything we just feel like man if the right people see this you know or and it's already happening we got the vice thing going so the sky's the limit I feel like you know there's a lot of growing coming our way yeah uh, one of the things I also want to bring up to you guys uh, you know, there was another great acquisition, I thought, on MLW's uh, part recently. Uh, Triller's, uh, Triller Fight Club's Ray Flores is going to start calling action for MLW as well. Uh, that. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know if you guys had any reaction to that. Obviously, he's a pretty high-profile commentator. Uh, I was pumped. I, I was pumped uh, watching him during the uh, the Paul fight and uh, Askren fight. You know, that, that was... Uh, that was cool. You know, Court shot me a text and said, this guy's going to be a part of MLW. Go, go, uh, check him out. And he was the best announcer there, I thought, personally. And, uh, and you know, I, I can't wait for him to – I can't I can't wait for him to, to, to actually physically meet him and stuff. That's going to be cool. Yeah, man. Well, a lot of great stuff going on with MLW. And, uh, yeah, I, you guys brought up the tag division. Currently, uh, not the tag champions. Like the other, you know, Hammerstone and Fatu, you know, they've two-year reigns things. You know, they blame the pandemic. But – 
is that where your focus is right now is the tag titles or are you guys we're, where where is your focus i guess right now we, yeah. we want to we want to get those belts back we, we came in with uh with the goal to be the tag team champions and it doesn't matter who it who, who has them we want them and yeah, well, we we want revenge against Los Parks. Even though he, he was a you know a legend growing up, I, I love the guy. But we we want we we want our belts back. And I feel like uh, Selena De La Renta is kind of manipulating a lot of uh, the the lucha guys right now. And so we want to take care of business, get 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 what's ours, and then be be prepared always. You know, be prepared for uh, Tom. I guess Tom was a referee for that match. There was a lot of shenanigans yeah. in that match, but. It's it's we we have nothing to lose now. We, we feel like we have nothing to lose. We're gonna put it all out there, and you know, and it was a good way to test ourselves. You know, in the in the right now we're being not being the tag team champions. We can we can fiddle around with the single uh, with the singles divisions and stuff like that. But we want to be the tag team champions again. We feel, we feel like you know, as Von Erics, we we uh, we owe it to our, we owe it to MLW and the we owe it to ourselves to each ourselves. other. Yeah. Rock and roll. Hey, uh, well, guys, I want to thank you so much for taking some more time. What an exciting time for MLW right now, guys. I mean, just multiple big stories. And as soon as I heard the news about MLW coming to Vice TV, I said, I got to talk to the Von Erics. I feel like they're responsible for this. So I, I'm really happy we got to connect. Uh, what do you guys want to plug, uh, promote, put over here before we wrap up the interview today? Well, yeah, you can f uh, follow us on Instagram at Ram Von Eric, Ross and Marshall Von Eric, or Twitter's uh, at Marshall Von Eric, at yeah. Ross Von Eric. Um, and we actually have a uh, because of because of Nick over here. He's a, he's 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 a he's a great personality. We started a a, a claw cast. We call it and the Iron Claw Cast. It's uh, we're on all uh, podcast platforms, Spotify, all of that. We have a YouTube channel and stuff. But yeah, go go check us out. And Nick, I wanted to ask you. We have a uh, we're, we're we're pretty outnumbered with Team Filthy. And if we, if we need a if we need another guy, if ACH can't make it, can we bring out? Oh, Hot, he's already ready. Hot Sauce Hossman. Can, you know, can he oh he's already taking a shirt off like, and the aloha man. shirt too man you guys you dude guys. there that's what i'm talking about you guys want the guns we Let's want go, it man tag team yeah. all of us yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i'm gonna show up in an interview i was only wearing a shirt though shoot <laughs> now I'm, uh, uh, I'm gonna show my girlfriend this photo later i'm gonna be like look at the beefcake right here all right this is why yeah. I, you know <laughs> This is the clickbait right here. Man. <laughs> uh, I've never ended a show, an interview shirtless. This is a first. Um, but hey, I think, hey. and and of course, I have the Von Erics back. I am from Houston, exactly. but I am still a Texan, and of course, I have the Von Erics back. So no yes. doubt about that. 